Serious therapists, what is something people tell you that they are ashamed of, but is actually normal? Feeling conflicted when a carriage driver who abused them is exposed to consequences. Many express feeling bad for them because this person abused them, but they also took care of them, provided for them, etc. I always try to tell them that what they're feeling is normal and understandable, but that the abuser needs to face consequences for what they have done. When you're recovering from an addiction, it's nothing to be ashamed of if you lapse or relapse. It's a part of quitting. It doesn't mean you failed, and it doesn't mean it's hopeless to try. Improving their life when people around them are still not doing well. It's easy for people to feel ashamed or guilty when they start making positive changes, but see their friends and family not doing the same. That they do not know what they enjoy doing. Often they have people in their life, including therapists, say try to do something fun today, or ask what do you like to do when you have free time. Many people I work with do not know what those are. Once I explain that I dislike these statements slash questions because they assume people should know the answer and that many people don't, I can watch as they relax, take a deep breath, and say something to the effect of oh my, that's so good to hear, I have no idea what I like to do, that's part of the problem, more often than not they feel like they should know, and that everyone else their age has it figured out, they are embarrassed to say, that they don't know when in fact not knowing, is very common, I couldn't even try to count how many clients I've had this conversation with. I've gotten a lot of clients complaining about how their friends and acquaintances have passed them by in terms of career, romantic relationships etc. The reality is a lot of people feel that way, but also can become successful at any point. They regret having kids, or weren't instantly attached to their child, when they were born. It's a lot more common than people think, but the subject is extremely taboo, and is not often as discussed due to the shame and guilt, that comes with it. Most of my experiences with married couples, almost everyone is ashamed of fighting, but everyone fights. In fact, conflicts can be very healthy for a relationship. Provided that both people know how to process emotions and work towards resolutions. BTW. Dealing with conflict, particularly in a relationship, is a skill that can be learned. Nobody is just born knowing how to deal with this stuff. Take the time to learn these skills and your life and relationships will be much healthier. Their trauma histories. Being conflicted about certain aspects of their abuse, like loving their abuser or not hating all aspects of the abuse. Suicidal thoughts feeling worthless or just not loved. I've also had many clients who hate slash refuse to talk about their strengths or what they like about themselves. Mixed or even positive feelings when a loved one dies after a protracted illness, especially someone who hung on for a long time, very sick and suffering, or an older relative with dementia, there's often a feeling of relief, of at least that's over. It's perfectly normal, and it doesn't mean you didn't love the person. That things have gotten worse for them over the pandemic. People are still holding themselves to pre-pandemic standards for stress, loneliness, and frustration. On top of already personalizing failures that are actually societal problems like wage stagnation, inflation, civil rights erosion etc. People still think they are supposed to just deal with these levels of stress. As a therapist in the Midwest, by far the most common one I get is being mad at loved ones, especially children. I don't know how many clients I have had shamefully admit that they get angry or even have fleeting feelings that they don't even want their kids when they cry slash act up. Note, this is a completely normal reaction and none of them ever follow through of course. Sometimes I threaten vengeance on the guy who cut me off in traffic. But that doesn't mean I actually want him to die. Your first reaction is automatic, and can be driven by stress. Being relieved or even happy when a troublesome family member passes, we tell people they always have to be upbeat, full of energy, and not drag people down. And because of that, we have these very important rituals, to allow people to be sad, and mourn in very specific situations. But if you don't need to mourn the passing of someone who was abusive, or was a real jerk, or who was just a big burden on you. It's normal to not need to follow those rituals. Don't be sad. Don't look for people to tell you that you'll be with them in heaven. 
Enjoy the feeling of relief, it's okay. Straight people having homoerotic feelings. Especially when you've been cooped up in a quarantine for almost two years, and haven't got many physical contact, let alone erotic contact of your preferred kind. A lot of heteroromantic people have been launching homoerotic relationships these last few months, feeling guilty about being the first person to make it in a circle of friends, and being way better off than everyone else. And inversely, feeling like you failed to launch, because people in your friend group have made it, while you're still struggling. Life isn't fair. Life isn't always a straight line. False starts can sometimes get you way further than initial successes. And success isn't always happiness. Imposter syndrome is very real as well. No one feels like they know what they're doing. Because we're all just children pretending to be adults inside, it's very scary when you come up against something too important to mess up and too complicated to get right, and there's no one more knowledgeable to turn to that can handle it for you. Surely there must be someone else who is supposed to handle this, we think. But no, we are the adults in the room. We must muddle through and get it wrong to figure out how to do it right. But everyone assumes they are the only person who feels this way. Because everyone else always looks calm and in control all the time. The panic is just hidden within. Oh, and shame at miscarriages. They're so, so common. Seriously people, when you, yes, you, are part of a couple who has a miscarriage please 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 talk about it. More people need to pull together to support each other instead of bearing it in silent shame. Because you think that it only happened to you as a couple. And there must be something wrong with one or both of you. I think when people admit that they sometimes make things up and they are not sure why, sometimes this spirals into stories they have to keep up, especially teenagers, often in the context of talking about negative mental health. Then, parents catch them being happy and they feel they must feel down to keep up appearances. This is quite sad because then the low mood becomes reality, but the person is totally convinced they are faking it when they are actually feeling quite low. It seems to come from people not having the skills to connect properly with others, or trauma. The sad part is, these people do well if they can. Honestly I think everyone does, so if they could connect in a healthy way to others they would, but in these cases they can't, so they take what they can get. Many many men, especially men in their 20s feel terribly ashamed of feeling physically attracted to adolescent girls aged 13 to 16 or so. Quite a few are afraid the attraction is a sign they are pedophiles. I tell them that, while making sexual advances to girls, that young is terrible behavior. Feeling attracted to them is perfectly normal. Nature has wired us to find mates who will produce as many healthy offspring as possible to carry our genes. From that point of view, a post-pubescent 14 year old is an excellent choice. She is young, strong and healthy, and has a good 25 years of fertility in store. Also. A 14 year old who has developed breasts, etc. Looks pretty similar to someone in her 20s the differences are fairly subtle. If you're a 20 something someone who's physically attracted to women of your own age. Of course you are going to be physically attracted to someone who looks only slightly different from a 20 something. In short, it's perfectly normal to feel attracted. So long as you're not acting on the attraction, you're fine. Selfish moments or impulses that bring a lot of shame and guilt. They usually come from repression, so it's like a liberating moment of self-indulgence. Everyone is hiding almost the same kind of things from everyone else. In the end you wonder why it's all that social masking for. There's plenty of dark things that could be normalized without making them cool or justified either. Just understood and worked on when they happen. The number of clients I've had who have told me about being sexually abused as a child is astounding and heartbreaking. And while it is absolutely not acceptable that they were ever violated, it is so incredibly common that most people don't realize how many others have experienced it. Almost none of them realize that it is not their fault until it's pointed out by someone else. The number of clients who said they tried to tell their parents slash carriage drivers about what happened and were silenced is also incredibly high. If this happened to you, please know it is not your fault. And it's not okay that your carriage driver did not believe you or that they didn't take action to protect you from the offender. Healing is possible once you open up and start sharing with others who can validate your experience. That they still get upset by something that sounds trivial now. 
dad got called into work right before their birthday party by itself. It's not much, logically, they understand it wasn't his fault. The real hurt was all of the other times he let them down. How that gave them the idea they weren't worth showing up for. Him missing the one time they really, really wanted him to be there just sums all the rest of it up. Having their feelings. One of things that people usually don't see as normal is that they have these feelings and it's normal to express them. I spend a lot of time teaching both men and women how to express emotions while working through the fear of how others respond to them. It's so saddening to see how our society shames everyone for feeling. Sexual experiment with other children when younger which, if they were adults may be seen as predatory, but they didn't know better and sexual exploration with a sibling etc. is normal but frowned upon and people pretend like most of us all didn't do it in some way. Also masturbation as like a toddler young child, and ooh I'm not talking pedophilia, I mean like kids playing together her, and it comes up ECT, and I wish people would stop blaming themselves for doing this when they come in to deal with being sexually abused, and they feel like, because they did this, they asked for it, no you didn't this is normal and an adult made you weird about sex now by abusing you, and these two things are unrelated.